Hi, this is FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. Argentinian Cardinal Jorge Borgoglio was chosen as the new Pope this week. Coverage told us a lot about Pope Francis. He cooks his own food, he rides the bus, but it often glossed over the intense political controversies surrounding him. Here's NBC analyst George Weigel. A man who is a great defender of democracy in a country where democracy is under real stress right now. Weigel went on to make another reference to the troubled politics in Argentina. It's hard to know what he meant by that. The major recent political dispute was Bergoglio's fervent opposition to gay marriage, which he called a destructive attack on God's plan. Argentinian democracy, however, took a different view. But the most important stories concern Bergoglio's behavior during the brutal military junta that took power in the late 1970s. His many critics accuse him specifically, and the church in general, of failing to oppose and even working to support the dictatorship. This USA Today story touched lightly on that history, and it put it this way, he tried to repair the reputation of a church that lost many followers by failing to openly challenge Argentina's former dictatorship. This is especially striking because much of that USA Today piece is drawn from this Associated Press report, which thoroughly discussed the accusations against Borgoglio. Apparently that history was not what USA Today wanted readers to know about the new pope. A new report from the United Nations documents the death and destruction from Israel's attacks on the Gaza Strip last November. In addition to attacks on infrastructure and on journalists, the fighting killed over 174 Palestinians in Gaza, including 22 children and 13 women. But the headlines generated by the report focused on one child in Gaza, 11-month-old Omar al-Masharawi, and the claim that he was not, as was originally reported, killed by Israel. This Associated Press report referred to the photo of Omar's body being held by his father, BBC cameraman Jihad al-Masharawi, as an image that became a symbol of what Palestinians said was Israeli aggression. Of course, what Palestinians said was Israeli aggression was, in fact, Israeli aggression. But that's clearly not what is considered newsworthy here. The piece is mostly about the dispute over Omar's death, with the rest of the UN findings stuffed at the bottom. Which is especially odd, considering that the UN report has just one sentence about this incident. And there are reasons to doubt this new theory. The BBC reports that the Israeli military at the time said they were targeting someone in that house, and they never claimed Palestinian rockets were fired from that area. But for U.S. media, the story is not about the dozens who died in the Israeli attack. It's about one baby who maybe wasn't. And finally, one requirement for making it big in big media is possessing the belief that U.S. foreign policy means to do well. Take this March 8th New York Times story and its rather curious headline. The apparent winner in Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, has a grim human rights record, including the charge that he bankrolled death squads. Times reporter Jeffrey Gettleman notes, however, that many analysts think the case against him is rather weak. So what's the dilemma facing the United States? Well, to Gettleman, it's this. Does the United States put a premium on its commitment to justice and ending impunity, as it has emphasized across the continent, and distance itself from Mr. Kenyatta should he clinch this election? Or would that put at risk all the other strategic American interests vested in Kenya, a vital ally in a volatile region and a crucial hub for everything from billion-dollar health programs and American corporations to spying on agents of Al-Qaeda? Now, for this to make any sense at all, you'd have to believe that the first concern is real, that the United States has actually demonstrated a commitment to justice and human rights across Africa. But there's little evidence for that, and plenty of evidence to the contrary. The U.S. maintains friendly ties to dictator Teodoro Obiang of Equatorial Guinea, and that's in keeping with its history of supporting a variety of other African autocrats. It's worth noting, though, that Gettleman has written this story at least once before. When the U.S.-backed dictator in Ethiopia died, he wrote a piece pondering the gap between U.S. interests and its supposed ideals. 
pretending this gap and this tension is real, well, that's an essential feature of corporate media. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.